liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. Woohoo! We're back! Again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and again. And again. And again. Yeah. So. Um, so, what are you drinking now? I am drinking the... Ah, oh, what is it? Um, I can't remember the name of it. I forgot. What is it the coffee? It is. T- okay, that's yeah. uh, some kind of Basil Hayden. Oh, it's, it's the Basil like Hayden. A yeah. Caribbean. It's the Caribbean blend something or, other. or something. Yeah. yeah. It's really know. good. It has, the more and more, because I've had that the past couple of weeks, the more I drink it, the less it seems to have like the coffee flavor to it. Yeah. Now it just tastes like whiskey to me. Okay. <laughs> so I've grown a taste for it. <laughs> All right. I guess so. I, just, I don't like the coffee flavor. I bought that and I was like kind of excited about it. And I think they, um, they put it in rum casks or something too. I don't, I don't remember. They do. That's part uh, of what the Caribbean. Yeah. What makes it Caribbean? Yeah. <laughs> rum is what makes it Caribbean. What makes whiskey Caribbean? Rum. <laughs> um, I am drinking uh, Blanton's that I picked up from our friend the other night. Ah, um, nice. I was pretty excited about that. Yeah. And it, it turns out it's a top that I didn't already have. So So you're working your way then. Yep. I'm uh, almost to the Blanton's. Only six more bottles. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah, if you get the letters you need, correct. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because you can't, they don't let you look before you buy. Not well, sometimes right now. they do. Um, well, yeah, right now you can't even go in the store. Oh, is it covered so you can't see it when you're even when you're in the store? Well, I, yeah, I mean, they, they usually still have them in the box. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So you gotcha. can't just like. So Look you can't like open up the box, each box. I'm looking no, for a certain probably, ladder. Probably not. <laughs> but right now you can't wander Couldn't around go the in store there anyway. anyway so. I don't think. It's been a while. They told me that they were hoping to open up soon. So I hope they do because I need to make a run. And I don't want to make a run like you've been making where I got like, where I can't browse. Yeah, like, where you have need, to know what you're I need to, to make get. a browsing run. <laughs> mm. so. I would like to make a browsing run. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, well, let me start off, uh, by, um, apologizing for my statements that, uh, may have offended some people. Um, I made those statements from a place of ignorance and since then I've talked to some people and been educated on the subject and, and now I know better. And, uh, so... My apologies. You just made the like fatal mistake that I warned everybody about last week. No, I'm just practicing. I, I, <laughs> You're I, getting I, warmed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just filling in the blanks because it seems to be a, a oh. script <laughs> essentially right. at this point. You know, um, oh. yeah, apologizing for my ignorance. You got to throw in that I've been educated thing, well, and now I know better. And I tell you, hmm. it's so insane. So like, I was watching a report last night um, on the local news here. And I guess it's the dean, maybe over at you at um at South. I'm not sure if it was the dean who it was. It was one of the superior guys. Like, this is a uh, University of South Alabama for oh yeah people outside that have no idea what <laughs> South is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He um he made a a Facebook post and it was seen by some of the students and they are in a uproar about it and it was literally nothing more it was a meme that i had seen and the only reason i knew what the whole meme was was because i had seen it on facebook prior because they mm-hmm. they only showed the top part and so it was like what it was was it was like two young children one white up top and then a, um a japanese kid below it mm-hmm. and the the top caption that they showed on the news was um something about like if this kid has to apologize for racism or slavery. Mm-hmm. Then on the bottom, it was the Japanese kid. Then this kid should have to apologize for um, for um, bombing Hawaii or whatever, Pearl Harbor. Okay. <laughs> um, and that was like the post. And it was, they were in a uproar over it. Like they had people crying on the news mm-hmm. and like, it was, it was like a big thing. And this guy came out and made all these statements saying that he understood he shouldn't have made this post and it was insensitive and to the Japanese kid, I guess <laughs> like that's all I could think was okay. like it was, but it was like a big deal. And this guy may lose his job. Yeah. And, um, he and, probably will. 
and like he, but just like you were saying, like he's gonna like, well, maybe you mentioned, I don't know, but he's like supposed to take all this sensitivity training now. And of course, the people that he was apologizing to that were on the news crying and whatnot, like they weren't accepting his apology and they were like, yeah. oh, I knew this guy. He, I thought he was a good guy. And now he said something like this. I just can't believe it. Yeah. And it's, and now I know he's a terrible person inside. Yeah, clearly, he's yeah. a terrible person <laughs> right. because he made this post. And I just, I, I couldn't get over it. Like it was, it was one of the, it's crazy, man. Yeah. So um, what are you going to do when they, uh, they come up to you and tell you that you need to kneel and apologize for your whiteness and for the slavery that you caused and whatever? <laughs> it's going to, it's not going to be good. I'm telling you, here's what I'm worried about is I'm worried about what the backlash of all of this is going to be because mm -hmm. it's, it's clearly been taken way too far. Um, and People are only going to put up with so much in this country. Um, I mean, it's it's just the way it is. And I worry about what the next couple of years look like as we start seeing. Because right now, everybody's kind of capitulating and doing, going along with the program. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stay this way. Yeah, People are going to start pushing back to the stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it may get really ugly when they do. Yeah. I, I, I think the real concern in the long run is that I don't, think that prior um, white people have considered themselves a community like uh, any kind of joined community no, of the it's true. you know uh, you know of white people yeah I, I certainly do. I mean I've, I've never have and and still don't now but you're good but it's you push all, far enough it's, it's, and that's well, what happens it's then it becomes like circle the wagons and we've got to you well, know and that's not good and i don't want to mm -hmm. see that like no, that's not either. something i want to see but you, i'm already so i work with the public so i and in robertstall alabama so <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean i i hear a lot of things and you're already hearing some of that talk and it's nothing organized it's nothing serious but it's all kind of people just saying the same type thing like how long is this going to go on and how much are we going to really take yeah um, uh, it, it almost feels like a self-fulfilling prophecy because they keep talking about the you know this white support supremacy movement, white supremacy movement. And maybe I'm missing something, but I, I mean, I keep my ear down pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't see it, well, but I can see it starting to form in response. Mark it, mark it on your calendar as of right now. It, I don't see where it exists either and, yeah. and haven't. Um, I mean, at there's least, way fewer... At least not seriously. Yeah. Now, I think that there's, there's way fewer white supremacists than Antifa Oh, absolutely. Protesters There's no question point. about that. Oh. And th that's not to say they're not out there because they do exist. Oh, yeah. But they're a very, We've very... heard Richard Spencer speak. I mean, like yeah. they, we know that those, these kind of people exist. But these people are, are not predominant. Like they're, and, they're, and they're shunned upon. Mm -hmm. and, and the fear would be is that that's going to become less and less the case yeah. because of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's that's something I'm legitimately concerned about, especially like I say, just kind of listening to the way some of the, the talk is. But it's almost like like you were saying, like a self fulfilling pop prophecy. It's almost like the media wants this to happen. Oh, I, I think that that's absolutely true, and so does the government. Yeah. Um, like we said on the last podcast, and probably the podcast before that, and if we hadn't said it on podcasts before that, we definitely should have. Um, this is a this is a divide and conquer tactic. It is. Um, or I mean, you know, we're already conquered, really. But yeah, di well, divide and maintain the conquer. It's it's a way of <laughs> keeping people in line by dividing mm -hmm. them. Yeah, because exactly. we talked about it before on on this podcast a week or so ago or two weeks ago at some point about you know. There was real opportunity here in the beginning to bring people together to make some real change. And we discussed on this podcast what that change would look like and, and things that tangible things that could be done. Mm -hmm. um, and that it, it just I, I feel like it was opportunity lost yeah. because of the insertion of of just pushing it with the racism way too far. Mm -hmm. Making it about racism and instead, instead of about, of about, the, about the problem. Yeah. Well, it's, it's about racism and not about the problem because right. I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist, but there was fixable things here that could have been done mm -hmm. and we're not going to see them now because of this. Yeah, so. I think you're right. Um, and it's already starting to peter out anyway, like yeah. uh, in some places. Uh, in a lot of places, well, I should say. There's a few places where it's not. Um, what was the name of the guy who... I, I kind of want to mention this because talk about it going a little too far. Um, what was the name of the guy in Atlanta that was shot? Do you remember? 
Um, something Brooks, Rayshard Brooks or something? I think that sounds right, that yeah. It? Okay. Uh, did you see like the whole video of this? I, I didn't. Um, the uh, What I did see was kind of some of the aftermath. I remember the night that it happened. Mm -hmm. Like there was a, this is the one that was shot at the Wendy's, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like... On my Facebook feed, like there was all of these videos of there's a crowd forming at the Wendy's and blah blah blah, and I was like, uh oh, they're gonna burn down that Wendy's, <laughs> and, and they, they did. and they did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I didn't watch the video. I, I don't know. I've I've yeah, heard because it's clearly the Wendy's fault that the guy got drunk and passed out in their drive-through. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, and all I could think is, you know, I've I've run. Not, I don't own my own business, but I run a business for a corporation. And mm -hmm. I just, like, I just, I, it sucks. Like, I mean, it, I, yeah. if, I, if I had been in charge of that store, well, for one, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But even if it had, like, I would, I would hate to see that happen, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Well, uh, the, his interaction with the police was very amicable right up until they went to arrest him. Yeah. Um, like they had, these police officers had been very polite with this guy and he'd been very polite with them. Yeah. Um, and everything was going fine until they went to arrest him. Now, uh, from what I saw, I would call this totally legal shoot now. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak to okay, it. Okay. So what happens is they say, look, you know, you're. Uh, you were clearly driving under the influence here. We're going to have to arrest you um, yeah. for this violation. And then they start to try to arrest him and he starts, and then he starts to fight. He starts to fight back. Yeah. Um, and then they uh, try to tase him and I, I, it seems unsuccessfully. Um, and then he wrestles the taser away from one of the police officers and, and th throws the other one off of him and goes running away. Yeah. Now, what they keep cutting away from right before it happens, and most of the video that I've seen in major news networks, is when he turns around and fires the taser at the police officer that's pursuing him. Oh, so him. he got away with the taser? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And that's when he gets shot. Yeah. Now, um, the what they're saying in Georgia is that the uh, you know police officers can't use lethal force unless they're faced with a lethal threat. Yeah. Um. And they're now saying that tasers are a uh, a non lethal threat. Yeah. Um, but if you get tased, you're gonna lose your gun in that fight. Well, I mean, that's right. Right. What's the next step? Do yeah. you wait until after he tases the officer to see if he comes and tries to take the gun away and exactly. then then that, shoot him or that, what? <laughs> no, no. Don't touch that gun. Don't touch. I mean, yeah. I, I I can see that. I'm yeah. not even opposed to that position, but the truth is that um, that in terms of classifications, uh, tasers are not less than lethal. They're mm. less lethal. Yeah. There's a difference between less than lethal and less lethal. Yeah. Now, it may be a strange set of circumstances that you could die from a taser, but you can yeah. die from a taser. You can die from a taser. Well, I had thought I had heard a report or seen something that, that the, the taser had like malfunctioned or something. And that was the reason he wasn't brought down with it in the first place. Uh, that might be the case. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. it, it, it seemed that the officer was trying to tase him yeah. while they were struggling on the ground. Yeah. Um, but it was it was clear in the video, if you play it all the way through, that when he's running away with the taser, this is the surveillance video that, like, from the Wendy's, presumably, I guess, at that point that you see, yeah. he turns and he fires that taser back at the officer that's, that's really? chasing him. Wow, okay. And then yeah. they shot him. Yeah. And I, I don't think that that's... Now, the problem I have with it is back it up further. Yeah. Uh, so arresting him for being passed out in the drive through maybe that's where the problem is. And this is yeah. where I would say something needs to change. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I've voiced my own opinion uh, against uh, drunk driving laws anyway yeah. um but the point is that he he didn't represent a threat at that time now i'm not saying they should put him back in the car and send him home like well you don't have far to go <laughs> <Just> <laughs> try and right. get, or escort him or whatever um i mean i certainly wouldn't have a problem with them putting him in the back and giving him a ride home and dropping him off but this is where yeah. maybe some of the lefties have a point where instead of throwing the guy in a cage for this Maybe you get some 
um, counselors or health professionals out there instead. Well, it it seems to me that that should be that should base. I don't know. In in my perfect world, I, it mm-hmm. seems to me they would, like you said, take the guy home, maybe give him a citation. Yeah. Um. But I think that's how it used to be handled in the way back. I, yeah. I mean, like you take the guy home, you you mm-hmm. you impound his car, tow his car. I actually take him home, not to jail, and yeah. give the guy a ticket and yeah. cite him. And if you get so many well, of those tickets, they him, take your license. Just him getting his car out of impound is probably enough of a fee. Yeah. <laughs> well, the idea of the ticket, though, is that if this keeps occurring, then, right. then you can You take, have a record of it. Exactly. Essentially. Ah, paperwork. Yes. Bureaucracy. That's right, That's man. <laughs> Fair enough. So. Um, so I, I think that... And, but the the city has charged the cop with murder. Now, yeah. this is going to be a bad thing in the long run because I don't see how he gets convicted of murder. Yeah. Um, and when he's not convicted of anything, then there's going to be another set of riots. Another, another uprising. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're just kind of prolonging this is what you're doing. Whereas you could have just gotten through the whole thing by saying, yeah, I mean, we think it's a legal shoot. Yeah. Um, and right. the, I mean, it doesn't change my position on I'd rather there not be, you know, government <laughs> police running around. But, yeah. um, but I think in this situation, yeah. that what they did was justified. Yeah, and, and my once kinda, you get to the point where he's shooting at them, my uh, my litmus test for stuff like this is if it was if it was justified for the police to do it, mm-hmm. would it be justified for me to do it? And if to me, if somebody was pointing a taser at me, you mm-hmm. know, that, I think I'd be justified to return fire. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the law would agree with you, but I would agree with you. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't know. You may, you, you're you probably right. Yeah. Um, I think if he was on your property, the law would probably agree with you, certainly in Alabama. Well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and does actually depend, in Georgia, too. It depends on where you're at. That has yeah. a lot to do with it. Um, but I, I don't know. Oh, I did want to point out, uh, this is shifting gears a little bit and we'll get back to the same kind of stuff, but, yeah. um, the, uh, New York times, I guess it was last week. It might've been the week before, uh, did print a story on the, uh, Bolivian coup that we covered nearly a year ago, mm. um, saying that the, uh, that the reports of the, um, fraud in the election, uh, may have been overstated ah. or may have been, Unfounded. Fabricated. <laughs> <laughs> Can we use the word fabricated? Yeah. So, uh, and I, I would just like to point out that when it happened. We called that. that <laughs> and I wanted to say, like, this is why we get it right. Yeah. Okay. This is why we get it right. If you see a story that's going on um, that you think that there probably should be uh, some dissent or criticism or... Um, you know, alternate viewpoints uh, expressed and the mainstream media is all saying the same thing. The way we get it right is by taking the other side. Yeah, right. Because the other side is almost always correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's the reason the media isn't picking up on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, they've been given their marching orders. Well, exactly. Yeah. And they're very good at following them. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> I'm not sure how to lead into this exactly, so we're just going to do it. Uh, we There's a couple of things going on. I, I wanted to talk about all of them because uh, in the same way that we were talking about how the Abolish the Police movement, that we're happy that the Overton window has been uh, opened a bit um, so that we can talk about our ideas on abolishing the police, but to be careful because the the people who are promoting it right now their opinions aren't the same as ours. No. They're not going at it from the sa- for the same reasons, and, it's, and they're not wanting the same result. Well, and it's become plenty apparent that they haven't really thought about this at all. Like, I've yeah. seen some media clips of people who are, when you ask them, like, basic questions about what it would look like without police, have no answer. Yeah. Like, well, there was the lady in Minnesota that when she was asked specifically um, about, you know, the obvious question of, well, if somebody breaks into my house at night, who do I call? And she immediately turned it out around into, well, that's your that question's being asked from a privileged position. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she didn't have an answer of what to do, but she was pretty 
quick to point out that it's because of your privilege that you even think that there's an option that somebody might help you in this situation. I was Ooh. kind of blown away. Yeah. Um, the uh, the upside is that the libertarians have been talking about this stuff for a long time. Well, we, we put a lot of thought into what it would look like without police. Exactly. And so maybe we spend a little bit more time. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. that I think that one of the problems that I have um, intellectually, and I think it comes through on this podcast probably, which is, and it's part of your role here, yeah. is to ask me additional questions, is because I make some assumptions about what people will know or understand that maybe they yeah. haven't been exposed to. Yeah. Um, and uh, so maybe we should spend a little bit more time here on this podcast talking about what a, a, a world without government police would look like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time educating an officer only a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, we talk about privatization of police. Oh, let me actually bring, this is another tangent, but let me bring sure. this up here because I thought it was interesting. Um, I was watching RT this morning on one of their little special programs, like Sophie something or other. Anyway, yeah. um, she was talking about, uh, she was talking to Jeffrey Sachs. You remember this name? Sounds um, familiar, but I don't know why. He's an economics professor um, at Columbia, I think. Anyway, some uh, Ivy League school. Um, he's also connected to the uh, Goldman Sachs, et cetera. Ah. So like, anyway. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about uh, you know, what um, a proper market would look like and, and so forth. And I found it very strange. So this is another example of people talking about using the words that we use, but not talking about the same thing. Yeah. Um, because he talks about a, a free market economy. Um, but this is the guy that helped uh, dismantle the, the state economy of the Soviet Union after it uh, broke up into the Russian republics and handed out to all his friends. Um, <laughs> when he talks about privatization of an economy, uh, of he's not talking about privatization in the way that we think of it. Yeah. Um, he's talking about... Uh, like and, and oligarchs fact, he, or whatever. Like Yeah, yeah, exactly. He And in fact, it, publicly, he rails against, it, you know, the... Um, the the advantages of the many versus the few and how um, the the economy uh, as it exists today, the reason that we need government is because um, we have an economy that that benefits the the few at the expense of the many. And the truth is that it's his policies that, that, that have, have resulted in that. this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so every time he he's not talking about a free market, he's talking about a a, a cronious system, yeah. um, very different than when we talk about a free market. When we're talking about individuals making voluntary exchanges and um, without the interference of a government choosing winners or losers, he wants government involved to choose winners. Yeah. Um, but he won't say it like that. I mean, but yeah. he's like one of the principal crafters of the the you know the um, shock doctrine. Uh, type economy, the taking advantage of a, a crisis to rebuild the economy in the image that you want it. Yeah. Um, or rebuild society in general. Like the economy is only a part of that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because that's just another example of the way some people are using the terms that we use, uh, but using them in a very different way than we mean them. Well, and um, there's as libertarians. There's a lot of problems like that. Just like, and I know I mentioned on the podcast last week, but the same thing when I was talking with the cop about like privatization, like anytime you mention like privatization, like of anything that the government already does, it's like, it's this just reaction that it's going to be, Ten times worse than if the government does it, and mm. which is crazy because we all know the government sucks at doing everything, and you don't have to be a libertarian to know that. Yeah. Like, so it's it's weird that we have everybody has that reaction mm. to privatize stuff. Yeah, but, I was talking to somebody in my office um, about the abolishing the police because uh, she asked me how I felt about it as a libertarian. I told her what I thought. Yeah, um, I said that we've been advocating uh, the abolition of the government police for a long time that, you know, and, um, she was saying, well, you need a, uh, uh, a uniform set of rules and somebody to, to enforce them and, and so forth. And, um, that she agreed that there were problems with, uh, with community policing, but you know, that, that she thought that it was important to have like one set of rules that everybody, and I said, 
look, you're talking about nationalizing. You're you're talking about nationalizing the police, like making yeah. it a federal police force. That would now, be like way worse. <laughs> yeah, and I said, uh, can what has the government taken over? What has what industry do you know of that has been nationalized? That wasn't a complete mess afterwards. Yeah. That that the government did a better job. It, it and does, she said, "Well, none." But this is a special case. It's always a special it's case, always, right? Yeah. Um, it's true, and it, it just goes back to like it, local areas know what's best for their community, and what's right for one place won't be right for somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. Yeah. So. And I think that we can kind of combine these things together because the other thing that you've got going on that's making some news, but not a lot. I mean, not yeah. not good news. I mean, you're not getting any real reporting, but um, is the Chaz Chop, whatever they're calling it today. Well, there may <laughs> there may not be much report because you're right. I didn't see much on it um, on the like mainstream news, mm -hmm. but I am getting asked about it constantly yeah. by people I know and interact with. Well, um, and it's no matter what side you're on, people are like, oh, well, you know, this is a, this is a little autonomous area without the state. And, you know, yeah. and if they're on the right, they're saying, and it's a complete disaster. So, you know, your anarchy isn't going to work. And, um, if Everybody, you're on the left, you're, they're saying it's a communist utopia. You said that this would never work. And, <laughs> and we don't really know what's going on in there. Or at least I don't No, I mean, I, I don't, I've heard some, I've heard some on the ground from, I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups that mm -hmm. are different ones. And I've, um, there's been some people post stuff in the groups that live in Seattle mm -hmm. that, that have went down there or live in the area and it's talked about it. So, I mean, I've got a little bit of information from those type people. But nothing really from the mainstream media, yeah. um, at least not much. Nothing that wasn't terribly slanted. But well, yeah. exactly. And everybody that asks me about it has their own slant about it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's coming with their own biases about it. Yeah. And and the truth is, I don't really know a whole lot. I mean, I, it's it sounds like a mess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does to me too. Uh, I've seen um, video from inside the zone. Uh, yeah. Just walking down the sidewalk and the um, all the graffiti across the front of all these businesses and the sidewalks and and all the buildings there. Um, and, uh, you know, they there has been reports of what's her name? Carmen Carmen Best. Is that right? The Seattle police Ooh, chief. I don't know. I think that that's it. Um, anyway, uh, she was talking about. Um, how their response times have gotten really bad in the zone. So their response times are usually about five minutes for a 911 call, and they're now 18 minutes to get into the zone. Yeah. Uh, there's been reports that police aren't even responding to calls in there anymore. Well, I mean, um, if they're autonomous, they ought not respond to them. You know, I mean, well, that's kind of where I stand with them. I mean, yeah. you, you can either be autonomous or you cannot be, but if you're going to choose one of those, you're yeah. kind of on your own. Well, I mean, it's it was clearly a misnomer right from the beginning. They're definitely not autonomous. They're needing help from the outside. They're yeah. completely unable to support themselves, but that's... Which, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Hey, trade, I'm all about trade. Well, like, <laughs> kind of where I come from is that with it is if unless everybody that owns property in there got together and said that this is what we want mm. this is this is not okay yeah because all of and and you know all of those people that own those businesses and stuff they didn't be like oh well this is a great idea let's do this yeah um and so I, I, only other way i know to look at it is they're being invaded by these mm. people yeah um and i mean that's just the way i see it mm. you know so I mean, I else. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I've gone off on enough tangents though, so we'll stick with this. L let's assume that that's the case though. Let's assume that all these businesses and and the residents of the area agreed with it. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out that while uh, one side of the argument is saying that this is a you know a, a peaceful utopia or whatever, no. um, that Carmen Best in her announcement about the response times, uh, did say that they had gotten lots of calls for, um, various forms of burglary, um, and rape yeah, was, was a say, real problem. I was, I, I had heard that rape was, that there have been many calls over that. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't sound that utopian to me. Uh, but then on the other side, um, that it's a complete disaster. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But the question becomes then, 
um, why is what they're doing? So they're in there saying, uh, you know, we've abolished the state and here's, a, you know, a, an anarchist utopia. By the way, like a lot of this is the people that um, call themselves anarcho-communists that many of, <laughs> or at least there are many in the Libertarian Party. Which there I are. Find strange. I was going to say, there's. Um, a, I think they have like a group or whatever yeah. in the party. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They have their own little caucus. Yeah, caucus. Um, I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, it's yeah. caucus. Um, but, uh, the, the question I think here is in the same way that how is abolished the police different for them than it is for us? How is this anarchy different for them than it is to us? Because they're out there calling this a, you know, an anarchist state. Yeah. And, um, the representation is not real positive. So how do we differentiate, differentiate what you and I advocate in terms yeah. of anarchy and as opposed to what they have going on there? What's yeah. the difference? Yeah. Um, because everybody else is looking at this. People that aren't libertarians that haven't been immersed in this ideology um, are looking at this and saying, yeah, this is a clear example of why anarchism doesn't work. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I would start by saying there's a difference between anarchy and anarchism. Yeah. Um, you know, primarily being that it's not it's not chaos that we want. It's that we don't want rulers. And as I've said before, there's a difference between rulers and leaders. And the difference is voluntarism. Yeah. Like you choose leaders. Yeah. Rulers choose themselves. Exactly. And they seem to have in this autonomous area too. Yeah. Um, you got warlord Razmataz or Raspberry or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, his name is. That's the new some, one yeah. uh, as far as I know. I mean, but, you know, this all seems... Uh, you can't be certain about any of this. No. Um, certainly one of the first well, guys that claimed his rulership over the domain <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> um, had to step down because, uh, their, you know, Twitter reports came out that he actually, she, I don't know. I think that it, it was a self-described, I'm just going to go with it. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a self-described transgender lesbian. So uh -huh. I'm not sure exactly what that means who else could rule this group um, I mean, yeah could you pick anybody back but it turns out that this person had a history of um psychological and physical abuse of his partners her partners oh. its partners yeah uh, etc and this came out on twitter and um the person that. yeah the person was forced <laughs> to step down and it was it, so it, social justice works in this yeah <laughs> in this sphere right um and that's kind of the point right and yeah. it's the point on both sides. So what I imagine with their version of abolish the police is uh, a bunch of people making sure that nobody's feelings are hurt. Yeah. Um, they, they've got the, they, the police are replaced with social justice warriors. Yeah. We can even call them that well, you, social justice warriors yeah. that go out well, there they, and they make wear, sure that everybody they wear that tag proudly. Yeah. Um, and you know, you mentioned that on one of the prior podcasts and I kind of laughed it off at the time. Um, but now it's starting to look more and more like you may have had a point that that may, if we do abolish the police, that's what they'll be replaced with. Um, well, when I was growing up, there's been a real shift, you know, over yeah. time and it's scary as far as I'm concerned. Um, but when I was a kid, it was, uh, sticks and stones may break, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah. Somewhere along the, in, along the way things shifted and, and words became violence. Yeah. Now <laughs> silence is violence. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like steam just got in trouble is, is in trouble in social media um, and has a bunch of, uh, of um, creative, uh, you know, producers of video game, you know, steam's the big digital the distribution platform. Yeah. yeah. Um, they've got a bunch of, uh, of creators that are pulling their content off of their site because steam didn't come out and, explicitly say that they support black lives matter in the movement or whatever. They didn't say anything at all. And that has <laughs> in itself become a problem. Yeah. And so it seems like we're moving closer and closer to this world where, um, words are violence. Silence is violence. Like everything is violence except for actual violence <laughs> against people who disagree with you. Exactly. Well, or with this, with the SJW outlook. Yeah. I know our company, the company I work for, came out to um, with a big thing today, mm -hmm. like a big um, press release or whatever. Like yeah. that, we're I, I think the term they used was allyship, 
or we're we're oh, allies, good. <laughs> something like that. It was it was a it was ally with more stuff at the end, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was I read through it. I mean, it was you can tell it's it's just pandering is all it is. Yeah. Like there was nothing actionable in there, you know. Mm-hmm. And they made it a point at the end of it, you know, which we have a value program that we follow, and it's a good one. I'm I've always I've never had a problem with our, my company's values. Mm-hmm. Um, and it said at the end of it that you know. None of this supersedes what our values have always been, and blah blah blah. Um, but it's just you can, t- but you, but just like you said, I mean, that you kind of have to do that if you're running a corporation right now, because if you don't, you end up like what you were just saying with Steam. Yeah, you know, where you just like get pushed to what side, or mm. we've got physical buildings; they'll just start destroying them. Or you got producers that'll pull their products. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like kind of and your mama. <laughs> oh yeah, you want to talk about that? We, I, I do want to come back to why we're different, but okay. we can we well, can talk about to, that. We'll have to do Angie Mama right now. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so, uh, so how is it that we're different? And I, I would say that the first thing is that um, in both cases, both the police thing and the anarchism thing, is that that we believe in natural law, in natural rights, well, and, and specifically. Property rights. Property rights is exactly <laughs> what I was fixing to say. Like that's a big deal, and that's that's what I have. That's the problem I have with the Chaz thing. Is it's set up anyway? Mm-hmm. Is that all of these people have had their property rights violated? At yeah. least, uh, at least I would say most of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, who knows really? But because there's not nobody's down there looking. Right. But I'm pretty sure that most of those people did not sign up for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I uh, I saw a tweet from some guy in the in the zone that was living in the zone that had brought his tent down there and set up and in the park. Yeah. And, um, and he had left his tent and, uh, to go to some rally or event or whatever within the zone and, and zipped up his tent and he came back and found that, um, somebody had gone in his tent and taken his uh, backpack full of supplies and all his food and his, uh, his laptop and so forth. And, um, and he was very upset about this and, Um, you know, he was getting some help from some of the, the rulers of the zone to look for it or whatever, but you know, there wasn't luck. (laughs) Yeah. There wasn't a lot of hope for it. Um, not that there would be if he had police either, they wouldn't even take a report in Seattle, but, um, the, (laughs) the responses were pretty funny. Um, like somebody was like, yeah, man. Uh, you're with a whole bunch of people that don't believe in property rights. Your <laughs> your property was redistributed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you don't own that anymore. <laughs> he was like, he really just wanted the laptop back because you know a lot of his work was on that, which I assume was some artsy thing, but I I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> that's a, just a strong assumption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, the yeah, the point being that oh, and I love the idea. It, just from what I got out of his post, the idea that he thought that zipping up his tent. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to keep everybody that, out. <laughs> yeah, that was a clear sign that everything in there was his. Right. And then there was somebody that said there's a difference between personal property and private property. And oh, yeah. I, I wanted some elaboration on that because um, I'm not sure what the difference I'd, is. I'd like to know how that's parsed yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, that's the main thing is... Uh, I would say is that um, is that we believe in property rights. Um, property rights is what is a lot of what makes people responsible for the the things that they have and the things that they do and the way they interact with people around them. Yeah. Um, because if if you don't have an expectation that what you produce is yours. First off, there's no incentive to produce it in the first place. No. Um, secondly, like if you are going to produce it, there's no sense in having any real quality to it because uh, no. it can be taken from you at any time. Exactly. And if you can take things from other people at any time, then what's the point of producing anything for yourself? Yeah, exactly. Um, Just go take it from whoever's producing it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that the property rights are an, an important moral base Yeah. Well, um, for any kind of society. Yeah. Well, and it's definitely the base that we kind of rely on as libertarians. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that and like non-aggression. Yeah. You know? Well, and the idea is that uh, you own yourself. 
Um, you own yourself, you own your body, you own uh, your decisions, you own the fruits of your labor. All these things extend from the idea that, that you belong to you. Yeah. Um, and I think that that idea is missing here. Yeah. Obviously that's the guy that had his laptop taken. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so, but that's a, that's a big part of the difference. And you don't have a group of libertarians that, that believe these things. And so they're, I, I, like, I see the, why people, this is what we were talking about before is like, this is what happens when you take away the state, right? Then suddenly, um, you got warlord Rasmataz claiming, uh, domain and, um, and he's, he's now the law. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's what people worry about in terms of, uh, abolishing the police is that only the rich people can then afford security. And then the, um, the rules are whatever the rich people can get their people to do for them, essentially yeah. that they make the rules now. And so, uh, like our vision is certainly different from that. And yeah. maybe it would work and maybe it wouldn't. I think that it would. Um, yeah. but the idea is that, uh, you know, the most successful responses to crisis have been community organized. Yeah. Um, in all these cases, when we think about, uh, what was the hurricane Harvey? Was it a few years ago that went through Houston? And, oh yeah. Uh, huge disaster right yeah. and the you know the federal authorities were out there trying to do stuff unsuccessfully and the local authorities were out there trying to do stuff unsuccessfully and some of the most successful groups in in terms of helping people were community organized groups some of them not even from the community but people that yeah. came in from but private citizens that came in from the outside yeah. and were you know getting people food and water and um uh, and rescuing them from wherever they happen to be stuck and so forth um, to the point that they were doing such a good job to the point that the authorities actually stepped in and told them they couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Making them look bad. Yeah. Um, and yet, as I understand it, you had the, a similar kind of response in places like New York City uh, to the COVID thing. The, yeah. the government wasn't really providing any help, but communities were organizing themselves and having young, healthy people go get groceries and pick them up for the older people in the neighborhoods and things like that and making sure that everybody was supplied. Yeah. Um, Communities are capable of organizing themselves. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and that includes, uh, you know, not only for food and water, but for security too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and like we said on the last, I I think it was the last podcast, um, that... Every place that I have ever been has had some version of a property owners association or a homeowners association, um, or some kind of community organization yeah. uh, that almost certainly would be. It was always, in my experience, responsible for things that were that were communal, yeah. um, such as uh, in, in apartments and so forth. It was like landscaping and and all that stuff. So, you know, you got together, you put in a little bit of money, um, and there was a group that was organized to make sure that all the, the, you know, the grass got grass cut got and cut, yeah. all that stuff. And the pool was kept up and yeah. what have you. Um, and, uh, in homeowners associations, uh, and some, and condo associations, often it had to do with insurance. So, um, individually insurance was, uh, incredibly expensive, but you pull your resources together, um, and you could get insurance on the buildings for, for a discount. Yeah. Um, and so the, the condo association, uh, purchased the insurance and everybody that owned a property kicked in Paid to, into, yeah, to have it done to yeah. cover the premiums and so forth. Yeah. Um, and the homeowners association I, I live in now, uh, th- we all kick in, um, for, uh, the golf course and the pool upkeep, I think is essentially it. It's yeah. actually less than the condo association that I pay into, by the way, <laughs> yeah. I have to pay my own insurance here, but, um, but there's no reason that they couldn't also take over security for the area. And Absolutely. there's already tons of little communities that have their own private security. Oh Yeah. And, you know, of course, another thing that w- that you would have is that presumably, and people have been doing it in droves over the last uh, six months here, yeah. um, people would arm themselves. Yeah. Well, that's, that's something that, I mean, that's only going to continue to get more and more the case mm-hmm. um, as, as this stuff starts to play out, you know. Yeah. I mean, gun sales are just through the roof right now. Mm-hmm. But some of the stores I go to, they're pretty well wiped off the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so that's, 
you know, that's a lot of the policing idea. Uh, yeah. You know, how do you privatize? You, you privatize. You let people make their own decisions. And, yeah. and then there's some more accountability. And generally, it's going to be cheaper. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as far well, as the... And they're accountable to you in the mm-hmm. way that the police currently aren't. Like, I mean, that right now, if you have a problem with the police, you got to go to the police. But <laughs> in, this, in that situation, if you have a problem, you know, you can... You can Stop using their service. And yeah. Find another service um, that creates competition, you know. Drive which, prices down. Exactly. Yeah. And drive quality up. Yeah. And as for the autonomous communities, I mean, this is this is what we've advocated. I don't yeah. have any problem with them seceding. Um, I think yeah. that they're not going to succeed, but <laughs> they're welcome to secede. Um, yeah. And I, I think that you know, communities should organize themselves anyway. I don't have a problem with what they're doing specifically. I mean, yeah. I don't think that it'll work, but it's not my place to tell them the way that they have to do it. And the uh, what it comes down to, though, mostly, is that you're not talking about a place with no no rules. Yeah. Um, you're just talking about a place with no rulers. Well, and, and, a, and a strong underlying um, belief in a set of laws that that we think are universal. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's really where for, for us to really be successful as far as libertarians and creating a libertarian society, Mm -hmm. you really would have to have our need, which is kind of what we're trying to do with this podcast and what libertarians are trying to do anyway is change people's mind and change people's way of thinking Mm -hmm. because you can't just have this. You can't just like blanket do this and expect that, to outcome the way we want it to yeah. without people having a certain set of values and principles. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll collapse no matter what. Yeah. And and it's one of the reasons that Milton Friedman is a bad example. Like yeah. I like Milton Friedman. Um, he said a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Uh, he wrote some good books. Um, he is a good messenger and he probably in his heart was a libertarian. Yeah. But another thing that he did um, was that he was more than happy to use the coercive power of the state to impose a market, yeah. uh, a market system, yeah. um, which we don't agree with. Yeah. Um, you d- the, the use of the coercive power of the state is immoral no matter what you're trying to do with it. The <laughs> ends does not justify the means. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so if this group of people wants to split off and, and become their own little communist state, okay, yeah. fine, good luck. Yeah. Um, you better be able to pull it off is all I can tell you. Yeah. Um, I, but I don't have a problem with them trying it. Well, and, yeah. and while I, I'm happy to sit down and tell them why I think that their system's not going to work, I have no right to tell them that they can't do it. Well, and that's, I think that was a, I don't know when he said it or where, but that was a big Ron Paul thing. It mm-hmm. was that like under a libertarian society, you can have communism. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can exist, but it's just not going to exist through the force of government. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a voluntary thing. Yeah. Like you, you decide you want to go join the communist commune, you go do it, mm-hmm. you know? And, and there've been plenty before and, well, yeah. and there's been a few that have been successful. Well, and that's the reason our answer is the best because it gives you the opportunity to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You're not forced into any type of box. Yeah. Um, I, I've had the conversation with plenty of people that disagree with my, my position on this. And generally speaking, um, the reason that they think that the state needs to be involved and making decisions and, and mandating specific things is because people make bad decisions and they think that it's their place to make sure that people make the right decisions through the chorus of power of the state. Yeah. I disagree with that, uh, on its face. And the, the other thing is that there's a certain level of arrogance there that, um, that I know better than you. Yeah. And, and, and in a way, I feel the same way. Like I think that I know better than you. I, yeah. I think that I have the best system. I'm I'm certain that I have the best system. <laughs> but I'm not going to impose it upon you. Yeah. Um. I'm Absolutely. going to. But but that's the difference, right? Is yeah. that under my system, you can yeah. still do your thing. Exactly, and that's that's kind of the point. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So. Um. So I, I don't know. Did we did we cover that? Did we explain why we're different? I feel like we did. Are you sure? I don't feel like we did. I feel like there's more that needs to be said there. So I guess the <laughs> the end of that is um, if you guys have questions, send them to us. Yeah. Like I'm happy to answer stuff. I like I've to me this is very intuitive. Yeah. So if if we're not 
if we're not addressing a concern, then let us know what the concern is and we'll address it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can, you know, just reply to the post on Facebook or send a private message or, uh, my email is Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. Um, so you can send it there. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about it on the show. Yep. Absolutely. Happy to answer questions. Um, because we do have all the answers. Absolutely. <laughs> Our system is the best. Yeah. Well, and the best part about it is that the, the truth is that the market solves problems that we can't even anticipate. Yeah. Um, people find, you know, well, the, the successful market, actually, the successful, the successful businessman produces a product that people didn't even know they needed it until they had it available to them. Yeah. Absolutely. And if it's not, and if it doesn't work, then the businessman fails and a lesson was learned. Yeah. You know, and that person can either do better next time or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whatever. And most people that start that kind of thing, they will try again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And it also incentivizes people to, to take responsibility for their own life. When you know that the government isn't going to be there to bail you out when mm -hmm. you make a bad decision, you tend to make better decisions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I, I think that, um, I think it's better psychologically too. Yeah. I, I think that making it yourself is just better for your own head. I yeah. think that... Um, well, and it's good for people. And on the opposite end of that, where as far as people that want to help people and, and that find that rewarding, which most people do, mm -hmm. like that's it's good for them too to know that they can help these people that need the help yeah. and that they, they legitimately need it, you know, mm -hmm. and not be like just, well, they're on the government dole anyway. Yeah. So why, do I, why bother being charitable because the government's going to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have that attitude that, yeah. you know, well, the government's there to take care of them. So there's, why do I need to contribute to whatever the cause is? Yeah. Oh, on the um, social justice warrior thing, by the way, just the yeah. interesting side note. Uh, it was only um, a month or two ago that uh, the Seattle police chief, I think it's Carmen Best. I may have that name wrong. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the Se Seattle police chief um, had a PSA uh, that essentially said um, that if you witness uh, racism or bigotry, call 911. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the people flood the lines. In Seattle, probably. <laughs> yeah. I don't know though. I, I didn't. Oh. I didn't check out the statistics afterwards. Yeah. Well, I, just, I just said I think of the <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of the thing they had in New York where Do you they arrest had the, somebody for that. I'm just curious. Or all like, right. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, that's the other, and I didn't even really consider that. My mind immediately <laughs> went to the people calling in like fraudulent calls, like. Yeah. <laughs> and you've heard um, it was either Dave Smith or Michael Malice. I can't remember which one. Um, I think it was one of them anyway. Yeah. Uh, the, cause the, of course there was the call, like somebody made a tweet or, or sent an email or whatever. And Webster has changed the, uh, ah, definition, the definition or added a definition to racism. Right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it was just, it wasn't long before that, that I'd heard one of them say that the, you know, definition of racism is, um, uh, or a racist is anyone who's winning an argument against a leftist. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was funny and yeah. surprisingly accurate. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where we're going with this. Um, rest assured, though, that the the progressive ideal of a lack of police, social justice warriors, or whatever they happen to become is not what we advocate and it is very clear that most of them haven't even considered what comes next yeah and we've got 40 years of 50 years of thought into what yeah. what it would look like yeah. and um, what it can look like and for the entire legal system i mean not just the police but also the the courts yeah. and you see examples of that right now of course you see examples of private security right now too <laughs> exactly um and i don't know why people can't i think that people start to assume that when you say abolish the police it leaves it means no security at all yeah uh, it doesn't it doesn't enter their mind that there is an alternative which is kind of sad in and of itself <laughs> um, and, and an alternative well, that already exists. Yeah. And then with the courts, you have the same thing. You start talking about abolishing the, the court system and, or the government control of the courts. This is what we're actually, what we For. actually advocate. Yeah. Um, cause we believe in, in law and order. Yeah. Um, we believe in a legal system. Uh, 
but what you what people think is then that there's nothing else but arbitration is all over the place right now yeah and the best thing is i, I should see if we can get um we got a friend that used to work with the police department that speaks actually very eloquently about the problem of um government courts yeah uh and and i've i still maintain that I, the the real purpose of local police um, or community police uh, of any sort is to generate revenue for the community. That's a revenue stream. Um, That's all And it is. the same is true of the courts. They're the tax um, collectors. The more people that they can write tickets to, uh, the more people that they can bring to court and charge those court fees for, they're just generating revenue. There's no incentive for any court to find any private citizen innocent of anything. Yeah. Right. Um, because it's, it's only a help to the system to keep you in the system. Yep. To make you pay for it. Um, and uh, and so, people get caught up in that system. Oh, once, yeah. you're, once you're in the legal system, it's extremely hard to get out, even mm -hmm. if you're trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Like you, you still, you're caught up in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's tough. I've seen a lot of people go through it. Yeah. And there's a, there's a strong incentive for any arbiter to be seen as being just and fair. Yeah. Because otherwise, why would you hire them? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Um, you can't agree to like you can't get people to agree to to get two sides of an argument to agree to hire you if you don't have a reputation of being just and fair. Exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the way to go. Um, so I, I guess that's a that's an OK point to trap uh, to wrap up. I, I don't know that. Like I said, if you have questions, if there's things that we didn't address that you think are important um, or just things that we're missing or not explaining well <laughs> um let us know um, let us know we're happy to answer questions yeah and uh because we want people to understand this this ideology that we have yeah. that we're, we're that yeah. we stand that behind we advocate for yeah. yes <laughs> um so and with that i guess we will uh we'll wrap it up um we're we're getting close to an hour sorry no clips this week no, no clips. Uh, no great quote to leave us on, Mike. Well, um, I will say this: that with the Chaz, uh, it seems that we've got two sides of this, um, and I, I just keep thinking of the Simpsons episode. I think it's called uh, Das Bus, uh, which is um, I don't remember what season it's in. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, where <laughs> I think that. The people on the left see this as an example of the Swiss Family Robinson, but with more cursing. <laughs> um, and uh, the people on the right see it more as a, a, the Lord of the Flies. Um, <laughs> and that, that's the Simpsons episode. That's it's the Lord of the Flies parody. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it seems to me that the people there um, are uh, just, you know... Um, waiting for the monkey butlers to regale them with jungle stories while they live like kings. Damn hell ass <laughs> kings. And uh, that's that's what it seems to me is going on there. So um, I actually remember the episode. The only part I remember, though, is where the... the Damn hell ass kings. <laughs> no, where the little dorky <laughs> kid's like, these berries taste like burning. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the joke. I think that's the show title too. Tastes like burning seems like the perfect show title for right now. Tastes like burning. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Um, like and share. It always helps. Uh, comments and um, reviews. Yeah, we yeah, like reviews. Yeah, are appreciated. And uh, we'll be back in a week when we finally get this right. Uh, in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later.